There's no car. What happened? Oh, here we go. Let's let's try this. Hi, everybody. This is Chris. This is the Smorg Show podcast, Smorgasbord Radio Show, episode 113. And recording this sometime in February 2020. I lost track. There we go. We're going to see who the mystery guest is for this week. How you doing, everybody? Hey, hey Jerry. Jerry Malauskas. That's me. Huh. Welcome hey, to the, Chris. Welcome to the Smork Show Lounge. Yeah. I see you've done some extra decorating. Still just as dingy as it's always been, though. Oh, yeah. It's it's dark. You got the cobweb. No, I've cleaned the cobwebs. Yeah, you've cleaned the cob, cob, cobwebs. I don't know what the cobweb is, but yeah. no, you, yeah, you, you know, it's all right. It's the, You have to keep the man cave ambience going, so I understand. I understand the feel. Every time you come out, there is probably some new element to it because I keep moving stuff in. Nothing ever goes out. When, once you get into the man cave, nothing leaves. Yeah, it's kind of like a black hole. It pretty much is. I don't think there's much more room in here. Yeah, like I said, you're you're gonna have to knock down the uh, one of the man cave walls and expand it a little bit. I do want to expand the <clears throat> operation someday. I'm thinking about going into television at some point. <laughs> but that's a much that's a much more expensive endeavor. I would say so. Yeah, and more hassle too. You know, yeah. at least with podcasting, you just have to worry about the audio. You don't have to worry about lighting and angles and looking good and taking a bath. No, or shaving. I'm going to move over to my uh, my other conversational uh, booth. So oh. keep talking while I make a transition. All right, here he goes. Here he goes. He's moving over to the other. Yeah. There it is. Man, there what is. a journey. <laughs> don't to... stop believing. I don't remember the rest of the stupid lyrics. Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry for any Journey fans out there. I don't want to offend. Okay, here we go. Yep, there you go. So you are back in the in the lounge. Welcome and got my beer here. So you missed a couple of episodes. You were out here last in October or September, I guess, for the Oktoberfest episode. Oh, yeah, I did two of them with you. That was the second one I did. That's right. Uh, last episode was a fantastic one. Dave Jackson was out here, and we had a Valentine's Day episode. And uh, you know about Valentine's Day, right? No, I, actually, I invented the holiday, and it's going to be a. It, you're going to hear it catch on, and you remember where you heard it first. Is it anything like Valentine's Day? It is exactly. I'm glad you. Sorry, I'm I'm blinding you. This is my. These are my readers. Okay. Well, I mean, my reader light. Yeah. <laughs> hey, <laughs> nice pair of readers you got there. Oh Dale. yeah, you see the readers. This is this is the sad state thing. When I have to read now, I, I, I need the readers. <laughs> yeah, readers look at that over there. I, I took it up a notch. It's a level uh, two, two dot or whatever. Are they bifocals or just? No, no, they're they're like the Walgreens ones. They're like oh. they just magnify things so that you know, like when I'm in a restaurant mm. and the dim lighting, you know, because I go to all those fancy ever, places. Did, did you ever have contacts? Oh, I've had contacts since I was like thirteen. Okay, okay, but I've had glasses since I was six or seven. Oh, I remember, I remember those pictures. Yeah. Yeah. No wonder you didn't get beat up back then. No, I, well, I did. <clears throat> okay. There you but go. But not for my glasses. Although maybe I was, I think I was called it four, four eyes at some well, point that, in my maybe, life. Your hair was pretty crazy back then too. So I think you might've been beat up for that. That could be. I was beaten up for a lot of things. Um, sorry, I got off track there. Uh, Palentine's day. Yes. It's off of, uh, Galentine's day. Which I think has its origins in that uh, Parks and Recreation show. Uh, I guess gals get together and they just do things without their men. Um, I don't. That, wouldn't I, they just call that female bonding? Possibly. Now I don't know if it's necessarily like a like a hostile event against men. I think it's just a, 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 an episode. Oh, you know, when it, when it comes to men, if women putting men out, it's always hostile. It's always <laughs> yeah. hostile. 
Yeah, they the, just the yeah. hatred. I can feel it. But we can fight back. We can have Palentine's Day. Just that's true. Around. That's true. No, I mean, no. You know, we've talked about this before. Sometimes guys got to hang out with the guys, and the gals got to hang out with the gals. It makes for a healthy relationship. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Not at all. Like I'm what gonna, we're doing here. Yeah, I'm gonna drink to that. So um, we're actually recording this. So it's all, it's kind of strange. We, we, we recorded the Valentine's Day episode last weekend. We aired it on Valentine's Day. And now this is the day after Valentine's Day. And I don't know mm. when it's going to be aired. So it could be March 1st or something, whenever. But it's coming out. So basically yesterday was Valentine's Day. So last night, as an annual tradition, mm-hmm. since, I, since we don't really go out anymore, Kim and me, it's like, all right, we've been married 25 years, so... Well, you could go out, but kind of where you're at, there ain't a lot of, I mean, you know. Well, we've got some places. But anyway, that's not the point. So what I did was I did the annual tradition I ordered from Lou Malnati's. They have the, you know, the heart-shaped pizza. And that's it's cool. fantastic. Um, fantastic. So I ordered the pizza last night, and um, this guy shows up to my door, the delivery guy. He's probably, he was probably, I don't know, early to mid-70s, and he was extremely grumpy. As I'm signing the the check, you know, I'm like, um, so how's it going? I'm like, friendly. I'm happy that my pizza's here and really happy. He's like, don't ask me. I'm like, oh yeah, what's going on? He's like, this is the worst night of the year for pizza delivery. I despise this day. I can't stand it. It's the worst ever. I dread it. All these heart-shaped pizzas. And I'm like, Sorry, man, I added one more to your list. And then I just asked him an innocent question. I said, would it have been any better if this had been a normal shaped pizza that I ordered? And he just looked at me. He didn't know what to say. Like, I think I stumped him. Yeah. <laughs> and he just walked off in the night. Well, <laughs> so what I, the heck was that all about? A little grumpy and 75 year old and being a pizza delivery person when you're 75 <laughs> years old. On a cold night, very cold last night. It yeah. was like minus five. This guy's got a stack full of heart shaped pizzas in his bag. Yeah. Yeah. In one sense, I could understand that. I could cut him a little bit of slack because, like, if I were in that environment and I had to deal with that, personally, I'm not a fan of Valentine's Day either, to tell you the truth. So, just on that alone, the face of that, I could understand it. Then, on the fact that you'd be running, you have to run around in this ridiculous cold handing out heart-shaped pizzas <laughs> and delivering them. I wouldn't say that still, that didn't really give him the um, the reason to be kind of cold like that, but I could see him being inwardly grumpy. I could see that. Well, not only was he grumpy, which was inappropriate for a delivery guy, but he also kind of insulted the customer who just ordered a heart-shaped pizza, and he's like, doesn't like them. So he kind of double irritated me it's like how am i supposed to go and enjoy this thing now like you, you just ruined my night <laughs> so anyway i paid him I, I tipped him i gave him a tip i didn't want to be like well take that Sent him off in the night and that's it well i think you it, it, it makes for an interesting story and so you have that so yeah in so, the end even with his grumpiness he still gave you a little something he gave me something to talk about here you know grist for the mill so to speak so what I had, we had originally, back to your point about not too many restaurants out here, we actually have quite a um, number of restaurants in the area, and there's this new one that opened up not too long ago. Um, but after I read this, uh-huh. I don't even want to step foot in there anymore. Okay. okay. It's called the Burgle, uh, sorry, the Burger Local, which right there tells you it sounds pompous to me. <laughs> the Burger Local. Oh, <laughs> what does that mean? Okay. Um, so it's like you want to call and you want to make a reservation. Okay. Okay. So online, uh, they have a call ahead policy. (laughs) Okay. So listen to this. For a burger joint? Yes. Listen to this. Unfortunately, we do not take reservations. We have a limited number of tables and are the type of restaurant that is conducive to our guests, taking all the time that they would, once they are sat, This makes it difficult to guarantee that a table will open at any given time. We do, however, offer call-ahead seating. Okay, so you think, okay, well, call-ahead seating versus a reservation, what's the difference? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So here you go. You read on. How it works. (laughs) Think of it exactly as if you are 
physically coming into the restaurant to put your name on the wait list, but you are doing it over the phone instead. We recommend you call the restaurant shortly before you plan on leaving. Mm -hmm. If there is a wait at that point, the host will take down your name and number, add you to our wait list, and quote you an approximate time for when your table will be ready. When your table is ready, you will receive a text stating that you have five minutes to arrive at the restaurant to be seated. Great. So <laughs> so basically you're saying that you could call ahead, and let's say it's 15 or 20 minutes to the restaurant, and then once you've done it and you're like, they, for a bunch of people like leave, then all of a sudden you're like still like about 10 minutes away. It's like, you have five minutes to sh That's crazy. Exactly. Now you think that that's bad enough um so stay tuned and by the way i'm turning off the the heat yeah i was I saw i was hearing something in the background it'll it'll turn off in a minute it's, it's so cool now i don't have to run upstairs to turn the heat off i can do it remotely with the app so okay yeah. so we're gonna let that die down because it it interferes with the recording even in the man cave uh, i don't have it it's not soundproof okay so here we go so you think, okay, well, I don't know. I still don't understand what I'm supposed to do. Okay, so here are the rules. I'm like, oh, already I'm lost. Like, <laughs> I don't even want to go there anymore. But I, I was just curious to, to read on. Please do not call us at noon and ask to be put on a wait list for that evening. That is a reservation. Similarly, do not call at 5 o'clock and say we'll be there at 630. Only call shortly before you plan on coming into the restaurant. Next point. Sometimes when you arrive, you will see empty seats, but will still be told that there is a wait. This is because we notify our guests that their table is ready via text. After you check in, we encourage our guests to take a walk, sit at the bar, run an errand, or whatever else you want to do instead of standing around for what could be a long time. When your table is ready, we send you a text and then give you five minutes to return to the restaurant. If you see empty tables, that me probably means we are waiting for those guests to return. Okay, and here's... They don't take reservations, and then you think to yourself, well, you know what, I have a few reservations about this place. <laughs> and the last point here is, please do not, do not get angry at our host staff. A lot of them are kids who are working a very stressful job and are just trying to do what has been asked of them. If you feel that they have made a mistake or you have an idea for how our system can be improved, ask to speak with a manager. It's like, this is way too much hassle for me to even want to step foot in there. Yeah. I mean, the last part should be kind of obvious anyway. I mean, if you want to, there's no use. Of, like you said, if they're kids, you know, serving you or whatever, then obviously you wouldn't want, if you're, in, unless you're a jerk, you wouldn't do that anyway. And you probably say, yeah, can I talk to a manager? So it's like saying the obvious to me. They're working a very stressful job. Is it really? Is it really stressful? Is it more stressful than any other job? I mean, every job's got its own stress. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Factor. They're gonna. Are they gonna? Do they need a, a cry towel? A cry room? A safe space? Safe, safe space. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know this. You know, I, well, you know what? I think it's not that bad. Because I hear the Zoomers. I'm assuming we're talking about young people. They're probably talking about Zoomers. Zoomers. What is that? I haven't uh, heard of Z, that. Z. Oh. Ever, uh, generation Z. Okay. Yeah, by the way, we are part of the overlooked generation, Generation X. Oh yeah. Everybody talks about the Boomers and they talk about the Millennials, but ain't nobody talking about Generation X. You know why? Because nobody gave a damn in the first place. <laughs> well, they blame the Generation X for how the Gen Y. Well, actually, more of the Gen Zs are turning out. Well, maybe, but I think the Gen Zs, I've been hearing the tr trend is actually they're moving towards the center a bit more. They're not so radically out there. Oh, like so them. maybe it is the Gen Y. Gen Y is the, is the millennials, right? Gen Y is the millennials. Yeah, so it is the offspring of the, of the Xs. No, uh, well, no, Zoomers, I think, would be offspring of the Xs, don't you think? Well, they, they've really compressed all of the generations now. They used to be like really like 20 years apart. Now it's like X, Y, and Z seem to be like 20 years apart. <clears throat> or yeah. more like 30 years apart. Yeah. Uh, well, that's true. I mean, um, I mean, some of the Generation X, especially if they were at like, we're at the, we're at the older end of that generation. Cause 65. Keep, yeah. Well, no, uh, no. Well, it's 65. Well, yeah, I, I'm 65. You're 66. And, um, I was, well, they keep on moving that around too, because I was told 61 was the end of the boomers. 
and then 61 to 81 is your Xers, our generation. Oh, I thought I saw 64. I thought it was 64 too, but they, they so, yeah. yeah. But still, I would be, look, my mom was old enough, almost old enough to be a Gen X, not a Gen Xer, a, a um, greatest generation or? No, 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 no. She was born in 44. So if she had been born two years later, oh. she would have been uh, a, a boomer, you know? But before the boomer, they call the gener- the greatest generation now. Well, but I think those people were born in the twenties, maybe. Yeah, early. that's my grandparents. My dad, yeah, yeah. My my dad was born in thirty one. My mom was born in forty four. So thirty one yeah, would have been the greatest generation, which would have probably probably been more so, especially with the older Gen X. That would have been the generation that would have had the Gen X kids, the ones that were having kids yeah, in the right. 60s, early, early to late sixties, and then the ones that were in the seventies may have been more of your boomer early, maybe the boomers starting to pop out kids, but. But yeah, but overall, it would not have mostly, mostly the Boone generation wouldn't have been getting kids out until like the late seventies or so. If you think yeah, about right. it, because when they started to mature it was around the early seventies. So they would have still been kind of, yeah, you know, all those terms of the generations really came later as a part of a marketing thing, more of a cultural definition because they didn't call the greatest generation, the greatest generation when they were in uh, there, they no, didn't no, call no. generations anything back then. They were just. Well, yeah, there was one they called uh, the Lost Generation, which I think was was around between the wars. They kind of grew up then, but it was something to do with the, you know, coming out of World War One. But yeah. the thing is, the thing is, the reason I, I talk about the Gen X is because there is so much when they do talk about the generations in media. They rarely talk about the our generation. I mean, they really it gets glossed over. So the the stereotype of saying Gen X is the looked overlooked generation is not as much of a stereotype as you think. We don't get talked about in the media. Mm-hmm. At least that not I've seen. Maybe you've seen something different, but I think we're still the largest or the biggest spending uh, demographic uh, because we're we're well. See, that's the thing. I think the the millennials are targeting now because they're now they're going to be the new spending. Spending, yeah. Uh, but they are buying. They're doing more purchasing of experiences rather than material goods. They they want to travel. They want to experience things rather than acquiring materialistic things. Which I think is not a bad thing, and I think that the generation that comes after Zoomers will probably be kind of similar in the sense that they're not going to be, it's not going to be that ostentatious 80s and 90s, like, oh, look how, look how much I bought. Look look at the big fancy car I've got and all that. That kind of, because they've, they've, especially with the, the collapse of 2008 has really kind of made a lot of these younger generations think that, you know, you could build up a whole bunch of stuff and you could lose it like that. Mm-hmm. So they're looking at things more from hopefully a longer term perspective, kind of like the earlier generations used to do. It's like, well, we're going to set this thing up, but it's going to happen overnight. I don't want, inst- you know, maybe, maybe they're moving, moving a little bit further away from the whole instant gratification thing. Yeah. And, uh, mm. also the idea that, you know, the, that was instant gratification, but then there was like, especially they would say about the millennials that that was the generation of like, everybody had the press part, participation trophy so right so nobody learned how to lose with grace right so that you know that that's why you see millennials running around protesting breaking things yeah because they're they didn't mature in that way yeah, that's right so they're all going around, I want my I want my. it's and like you probably <laughs> got this yeah i'm looking here it says lonely generation lonely generation so we that could be the Zoomers there talking because I think it's exactly it. This yeah. is the new Echo Smith album, Gen- yeah. Lonely Generation. It's about um, living in social media mm-hmm. um, and where you're connected to everybody, but you're not really connected to anybody. Well, that reminds me back, and I'm talking, this shows you how old I am. And I remember being on MySpace. Oh, yeah. MySpace. Yeah. Mid, yeah it was a big thing, mid 2000s. Uh, it was huge, huge. <laughs> Sorry, I can't <laughs> help it. I, every time I. Huge. Huge. Um, I um, I remember accumulating over two hundred, maybe almost three hundred friends on MySpace. Do you think I ever talked or texted or had any messages uh, through MySpace or anything else with any of these friends? No, no, because it was just a thing. You like you collected friends, like some people would collect baseball cards or something. Yeah, it just, it just was. That's a that's the same thing with Facebook. I've got I don't know, very modest amount compared to people that have like thousands and you know, like 
Allie. That's her generation. Although they're less on Facebook these days, they're getting away from it. I think Facebook is more for like the moms of these of these kids. No, that's true. But I mean, I've got maybe 300, 400. I talk to maybe a dozen on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. Most of them, I, 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 well, I've been yeah. off of Facebook since 2016, so. I don't do much on Facebook either. So. This is a waste of time. I mean, if I already am wasting way too much time on YouTube. I'm not going to spend extra time on yeah, well, Facebook as well. Well, at least, yeah. At least with YouTube, I'm getting something back. I get some entertainment value. All these stupid posts of people's like meals or whatever their political bent is and the, the yeah. rants. I, mean, yeah. I, I can't blame them so much because I did put a few um, political rants on there myself, but it's like after a while, the whole thing gets very yeah uh, tedious. Exactly. Oh, you missed. So, um, yes, yeah, so I'm just pouring myself a man beer. In your man cave. Doing the manly thing. That's what I can do in here. So last week with Dave, we talked about the man cave. We talked about um, a lot of things I think you could have identified with last okay, week. Okay, okay. Um, but we won't relive that. Um, but it was, I thought it was a pretty good episode. Mm. It's been, um, it's kind of a, been a weird stretch with this show, the last few episodes, because um, after we did our last show in September, the Oktoberfest, Dave came out, and that's when we went into my private vault, and we pulled out the uh, the essay that I had written mm. about a long lost romance that never was <laughs> it was a romance in your head not in her head <laughs> pretty much hey there you go that's all you need to know you don't need to listen to the hour and a half of me reading the essay but that was a weird one that was a introspective one and it was but we made we made it funny okay we, that's we, good we, we poked fun at the situation that was going on it's like i can't believe like i'm not picking up on these singles si- signals so it was a good episode in that sense but it was it was different it was one topic the whole time uh, the next episode, I, my my dad passed away uh, shortly after that show, and then I did an episode d- dedicated to him uh, right around Christmas, and then, um, of course, Allie and I did our 10-year uh, anniversary. We had just hit our 10-year anniversary uh, mm-hmm. in January. We've been doing this for 10 years now. It's unbelievable. And then last week, we started to get back into the normal smorgasbord formula. Mm-hmm. The great thing about the smorgasbord formula is that it could be anything. You know, mm-hmm. it can be exactly all those things that we did that were not typical because it could be anything. Mm-hmm. So I feel like we're I'm I'm getting back in the groove again, and we're, we're we're talking about a variety of topics, and so this is this is good. I don't know why I just went down that. Probably the second beer mm-hmm. kicking in, and I'm just babbling. Um. So did you have um you were you said you had a couple of things that just to update us on and maybe you something with work uh, uh you, you yeah, yeah yeah well you want to <clears throat> well, just you know <laughs> I work as a maintenance engineer at a library out in the northwest suburbs of a, Chicago a maintenance engineer well I like to I fancy it up it's probably not exactly that terminology but that's what I'm going to call it anyway that's fine I'll go with that <clears throat> I mean, there's some skill set involved. I'm not a complete idiot working there. Of course not. Um, anyway, um, and I had to actually put my skill set quite, quite the test. I think it's only about two days ago, actually, uh, where I had a problem with squirrels. Squirrels. Oh, a squirrel, I should say, in the library. Not outside the library, on the grounds or anything like that. Inside the library. That's not something you typically see in a library, is it? No, I've seen some pretty interesting things in the library, but that would be a first for me, the squirrel thing. And you've been at the library for what, 25 years? Yeah, about 25 years. God, it's been too long. Anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a squirrel inside a library, inside an elevator, but not actually quite inside the elevator, but between the elevator and the the shaft th- or the you sh- the shaft and the floor is like a floor and you have an open gap so you got that, that crack in between the main floor, floor and, and the, the elevator, elevator so car yeah, yeah the elevator car w- which you know when you open up the door the door close closes on it but when the door is open you can see it so what happens to be in that l- that gap in the shaft man <laughs> <laughs> He's a bad mother. You talk about shaft. Shut, yes, you shut your mouth. Yeah, shut your mouth. Yeah, you can dig it. Anyway, <laughs> uh, in that shaft uh-huh. was this, first of all, I should kind of back it up a little bit and kind of introduce 
how the whole thing unra- uh, uh, unfolded. I was going to say unraveled. It kind of felt like it unraveled, but sure, that's fine. We unfolded. don't have any commercials lined up here. So oh, good. Right. That's good. Go for thing. it. Okay, but it was. It was really simple. I was uh, in, uh, we have a meeting room that we do programs and in different functions and stuff. That's like the, like a main one where, you know, you usually have some pretty big setups you have to do. So I'm there setting up for the next program and I'm going along, everything's going fine. All of a sudden I get, well, first of all, I start hearing the elevator because actually it wasn't that far away because hearing the elevator, like, the alarm go off like the elevator is open too long. Yeah. So I'm starting to hear that. Then I get a call saying, we got a problem with the elevator. We got a problem. And I go, okay, okay, I'll be over there. Run over there. And then they find the elevator is open and the alarm is going off. And there's this guy holding the elevator open saying, how's he doing that? Then I look down and there's this squirrel stuck in the gap that I was just talking about between the elevator car and the floor. Because they can flatten themselves pretty much like rodents. They, they just well, like, they are rodents, so they yeah, they yeah, got that. Yeah, that right, yeah. And so, so, so wait a minute, the alarm is going off because the guy is holding the door, not because the, the the elevator can't move because of the squirrel. Because I would think that the elevator would be able to unlodge itself from a squirrel. Well, yeah, but the other, the other thing too is that the elevator could probably well, it has a sensor, so if the elevator was starting to close, it may open before it hits the squirrel, but. And that's not a guarantee that will be the case, but the squirrel can't move. And the squirrel is not in the center yeah. of the kind of that gap in the elevator. He's off to one side. He's off to the, if you, the elevator is opens from, if you're looking at it open from uh, left to right, yeah, it's more on the left side of the elevator, you know, as you're looking into the elevator car from the, from the floor itself. So he's in there and you see the, 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 uh, his big bushy tail kind of fluttering a little bit and the legs kind of flailing around a little bit, but he's kind of just doing a more jerky style. Cause he's not, I mean, I, I'm assuming it's a, he, we don't know. I wasn't able to he didn't check. gender. I, I'm sorry. I might be misgendering to scroll. Oh, I hope boy. nobody, I hope nobody is uh, offended by that. But anyway, <laughs> oh, we, so for, for, for reference, I'll just say he, uh, and, and, and so you see that giving signs, I thought maybe the squirrel had been, had died at that point or, was, you know, was about the, you know, was in the last legs or whatever, so to speak. <laughs> I saw his hind legs anyway. Um, and they were just twitching around. I was like, okay, well, we, can't, we can't let the squirrel get crushed by the elevator. So I, I ran back to uh, where we have keys that uh, mm-hmm. can shut the elevator off. Okay. And then I came back and I shut the elevator off the key. And then, and then while, all the while, this other guy who was the patron was holding the elevator open, kept the elevator from closing, the door closing. And then also, I I did that, and then and and then we kind of just kind of, it was all it happened really fast, and there were a lot of people that were kind of agitated. It's like, oh, I gotta do something about the squirrel, and then the the alarm, you hear the alarm, so I'm like, okay, I gotta focus. And then so I run back again. After I done, I did that. I said, "Well, I need we'll get the get the squirrel up. But how, what are we going to need to do that?" And he said, "Well, you got to get some gloves." Said, yeah, you're right. I do have to get some gloves, but I can't just bring gloves so that and then just pull them out. Because what if he runs away or gets away from us, and then you know, then we're chasing a squirrel in the library. That's not going to work. So I said, "I'm going to get a, a bucket so that once we get okay the squirrel out of the jam there, out of yeah. the, we can put him in a bucket and hopefully hold him down long enough sure. so we can get him outside." And that's pretty much kind of what happened. We were very careful wiggling okay. the squirrel out so we didn't like, hopefully didn't break any ribs. Or, yeah. So or how'd you pry anything. him out of there? Did you say, I mean, did you like use a broomstick? No, we didn't no. do anything like that. We just basically, and he actually he, the, the guy, the patron who happened to work for the Elk Grove Village Fire Department. Oh, okay. So I guess he's used to emergencies. Sure. More than I was. Yeah. That particular one. Uh, was carefully kind of wiggling the squirrel out of that. Okay. So we, we wiggled him out. We didn't really yank or anything, just wiggled. And I would have just pushed three. <laughs> there is oh. no third floor. Oh, second floor, maybe? Okay, no, two. No, no, no. <laughs> that's because, that's that's because a... you're an uncaring <laughs> SOB. But. Well, what, what's the worst thing that could have happened? He got crushed. Oh, really? Oh, really? Yeah. Crushed? He would just been separated from the uh, from the shaft, from the... 
Come yeah, on. and two probably. Oh, yeah, I guess that's a problem. Yeah, that's a problem. Okay, yeah. so wrapping up the squirrel story. Yeah, I was trying to it's until long, you said something it's insensitive. One, it's one long squirrel story. Well, you know, <laughs> but it happened a lot faster than what I'm telling you. Okay. Anyway, the yeah. point to, to, to wrap it up, we we wiggled it out of there. We okay. it was able. It was actually the, the head was starting to kind of. We were probably getting the head out, but we got that done. Got it inside the bucket. The guy was holding it inside the bucket. And we, 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 we carried it outside uh, to um, an area by a tree. And then when we tipped the bu- bucket over to see it, get the, the squirrel, squirrel come out, didn't go out right away. Still kind of stunned. Didn't want to get out of the bucket. But then a few moments later, it shot out of the bucket, then up the tree. So from what we Is can tell. Is the squirrel going to be okay? Well, I'll tell you what, little Tommy. Oh, uh, little Tommy, I think yeah. the squirrel's going to be fine. The squirrel's going to be fine. Sorry, Larry Lou Jack uh, <laughs> reference. reference there. It's a local reference. So uh, this would be like if you on your job description where it says other duties, As this would fall there because, <laughs> yeah, 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 you have to be prepared. I mean, so you can add that to your... your... Oh, yeah, that's going to go in my, my next year's review. Uh, you know, to be there in, in a pinch or a squirrel pinch. This is Breaking Bomber News. Mistranslated Indian textbook explains that Japan nuked United States of America in World War II. In India, an epically botched translation job has resulted in a middle school textbook with more than 120 factual, spelling, and grammatical errors, including the assertion from the Indian textbook that Japan nuked the United States during World War II. The book has already been distributed to over 50,000 students. And while the state agency responsible for disseminating it has apologized, the book has not been recalled. And you thought American textbooks were bad. We are trying to bring out an error list and publish it on the internet, said Nitin Batani, the executive president of the Gujarat State Board of School Textbooks. We cannot recall the books at this stage, but we can give an assurance that we will correct the mistakes. As a few historians here and there have noted, it was the United States that dropped the atomic bomb on Japan in World War II, not the other way around. The textbook also mistakes that Mahatma Gandhi was assassinated on October 30th, 1968, instead of the actual date of January 30th of the same year. Also, the textbook claims incorrectly that proportion of poisonous gas carbon trioxide has increased due to cutting of trees, when in fact carbon trioxide is not normally found in nature. Finally, it mistakenly refers to the nation of Pakistan as Islamic Islamabad. A two-member committee has been set up to look into these errors and make changes immediately, and the education board is considering initiating action against the panelists who had vetted the books, said State Education Minister Pupendrasin Chudasasma in a statement. Here is the real question that Baba is asking. Does two people working together truly constitute a committee? It seems like you need at least three or four people for it to be a proper committee. That is a question for the next edition. This is Breaking Baba News. Uh, that Baba always on the pulse. <laughs> He's finger on the, the pulse. pulse. Yeah, he uncovered that uh, it was the U.S. that bombed Japan. And, and it... <laughs> I really, I didn't know that. <laughs> nice work, Baba. <laughs> uh, there you go. And I, I don't think I think Baba made a, a mistake in the report. I don't believe that Mahatma Gandhi was killed in 1968. I think it was 1948. <laughs> I think you're right. Because he would have, yeah. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> so, all right, Baba, you need to go back to your research. Well, 
Maybe the te- <laughs> he's been reading the, te- the textbooks yeah, over there. I think so. Okay. <laughs> okay. Just saying. Just saying. That's all. Uh, right. Good call out, Jerry. Yeah, that's, that's why you're our historian. Our yeah. our local historian. I thought you. I'm the hysterical guy. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> All right, so on this last uh, this last bit before we wrap it up. Segmento. This is actually probably an inappropriate topic for this for this podcast because we always like to have a family show. But we are in a man cave. And, um, and we're drinking. We're drinking. Um, what comes to mind when you, th- when you hear Gwyneth Paltrow? Pompous. Okay. Um, I, that's me. I, I, you know, if you're a fan, great. Gwyneth Paltrow says uh, selling a $75 vagina scented candle was all about empowering women. Um, yeah. Actress Gwyneth Paltrow says that her candle called, <laughs> this candle smells like my vagina, was a feminist statement meant to expose the shame that surrounds a woman's private parts. Is there shame? I don't know. I didn't know there was shame, but I guess everything these days is uh, somehow, at least with certain segment of the population, is an attack against women. There's attacks against women that I never even knew existed, but they brought them up. So, so Paltrow was just recently on the Ellen DeGeneres show. Ellen Degenerate, you mean? Who was uh, being filled in. I guess she was filled in. Uh, she was Ellen was gone, and uh, John Legend was uh, hosting the show. And uh, she explained this to him. Candle is called This Smells Like My Vagina. <laughs> this candle! <laughs> it says it on the box. It says this smells like my vagina. Yes. And who's my in this instance? Well, <laughs> it really was, you know, it's it's this amazing brand named Heretic. They, they create all clean fragrances. Uh-huh. And so it was really like a feminist statement, you know, because... And think, it was something that Apple could also be embarrassed by. <laughs> well, exactly. <laughs> um, but I think it's, you know, the idea that, again, women have been taught to have a certain degree of shame or embarrassment right. about their body. And so... So if you just light a candle that says, this smells like my vagina and, uh, you know, put it on the coffee table, yes. it's a little bit of a, a punk rock statement. <sighs> punk rock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what? Uh, I think that's exactly what the sex pistols had in mind <laughs> yeah. when they came out and did, you know, God save the queen. Oh, they were thinking one day we're going to inspire a third rate actress to, Put on a candle that smells like her private parts. That's exactly what the punk rock revolution was. I don't buy the premise that women are taught to be ashamed. I, that, I don't know where, where that comes from. I think the thing is, and this is my opinion, I'm prefacing this is my opinion, but amongst those that are more hardcore, more radical feminists, they have this conspiracy theory, and believe me, I should know I'm... The king of conspiracy theory. You're a conspiracy theory expert. On yes, the show. And, and, and historical expert. Exactly. Too. <laughs> uh, that they have a thing called patriarchy. That basically the entire stretch of society and history has been been one long oppression of women by men who put themselves in this higher category. And does this mean that it was never oppression of women by men? Yeah, there are probably long stretches of that. But their idea is that it's always been that way in recorded history it's always been men putting down shaming and marginalizing women that they had very little power in a lot of societies and they had no influence and they were just constantly being put down and shamed of their bodies shamed again there were you could probably look into situations where that did exist but to say that that was like the overarching overall arc of human history to me, that's a conspiracy theory. That's just basically saying yeah. that it was just set that way from the very beginning with malice. And I just don't believe it. Yeah. So this is where she's coming from. I think I that's see. her mindset behind yeah. this. So. I'm not trying to be too verbose, but that's no, the best no, way I can No, I get it. So the candle apparently was uh, from Paltrow's Goop Bouquet Company. <laughs> it sold out in about a day when it was introduced last year. But contrary to the newest claim... 
Paltrow originally claimed that the name evolved as a joke. Paltrow's Goop Company has a controversial history in publish or in pushing questionable wellness products and sex aids. For example, Goop promoted Body Vibe stickers, which it claimed could rebalance the energy frequency in our bodies, as well as dust, uh, sex dust, coffee enemas, inner beauty powder, vaginal eggs, handcuff bangles, vaginal steamers, psychic vampire repellent, a BDSM kit, and a love, a self love spray. Do you use the self love spray when you're using also using the BMD at BDSM kit, or do you use it <laughs> along with the vaginal steamer? What is a self love spray? I don't even know what a vaginal egg is. <laughs> I mean, I've heard of eggs in the uterus or the fallopian tube or whatever, but I've never heard of eggs in the vaginal area, (laughs) whatever that means. The company also settled a lawsuit back in 2018 and was ordered to pay $145,000 after being accused of making unscientific claims made by Goop's vaginal eggs. Paltrow's company claimed the eggs can balance hormones, regulate menstrual cycles, prevent depression, prevent uterine prolapse, and a combination of other illnesses. That's a that's a big claim to like just kind of put there on the product. Oh yeah, this is this product will do all these things for you. You know, I want to say something kind of funny or snide or whatever, but these things they they, they come out that you bring out are so over the top that I just sit here and think, <laughs> what, what? But I mean. As I look in the kind of the stretch of like uh, popular culture and and way things are going these days, it's just like the sky's the limit now. As a matter of fact, you know, there's no there's no ceiling to it anymore. There's no like, oh, that's that goes beyond the pale. The pale is no, gone. It's, it's gone. gone. There's no there's no line. There is no line anymore. Well, despite the controversy, Paltrow's company now has a home at Netflix with the streaming now playing playing a six-episode series called Goop Lab. Goop Lab. Goop Lab. <laughs> Gotta watch that one. What does Goop even stand for? When I hear Goop, Goop, goop I think... Goop. It, yeah, I mean, that Goop. It, it, that's nothing good, usually. <laughs> no, it usually is not. No, it's like, get that Goop out of here. Oh, my God, what's that? Doing vaginal here? eggs and Goop. Yeah, maybe <laughs> use the... Put it together, and you got vaginal Goop. Oh, my gosh. Maybe it cures vaginal Goop. I'm not sure. Well, there's a topic we haven't covered on the show before. Yay. <laughs> we that was that fun. List. All right. Well, I don't have anything else. That was a good show, Jerry. I, I, I think when <laughs> you have that, you just end it right there. Yeah, there's no way to top that. No, I'm not going to try. <laughs> Jeez. Well, this is another episode of the Smorgasbord radio show that you've heard so much about. Thanks for coming out. <laughs> Uh, our phone number is 31295 Smorg. Spell it with only one S. Yeah, another one in the can, man. Yeah. Email us at feedback at smorgshowpodcast.com and Jerry's personal email address. <laughs> no, You're not no. going to get that. <laughs> okay. No, thank you. Uh, we'll be back again very soon and enjoy uh, whatever you've got going on this week. We love you. Thanks for calling. I mean, right. thanks for listening. Right on. Right on.